Hi there, Mitty here again with another session of IELTS Booster. So in today's mini lesson two for the listening skill module, we are going to discuss how we can enhance our listening skill in IELTS or other proficiency courses. So in today's session, we would like to discuss three different exercises which could really help you enhance and foster your listening module for the IELTS test. The first sort of exercise that you need to do, let's say first type of exercise that you need to do, uh, is to sharpen the accuracy of your listening. So basically you need to sharpen your ears and how is it possible? Um, by this I mean that so basically you need to be able to get familiar with different types of accents in English language. If you'd like to uh, go for IELTS so you basically know that there are, um, it's mostly British, so it's 70-80% British, however, it's going to be 20% international language, Canadian speakers, um, Aus, I mean Australian speakers, or other variations that we have, or international students or people talking in English, so you might be, um, you might get exposed to different types of accents. Uh, so basically your, your ears should be sharp enough. So you, you need to sharpen them. By sharpening, I mean that you need to be able to distinguish phonemes or sounds, how they're connected, um, how they're articulated, or how, by articulated, I mean how they are, uh, they are expressed or how they are made. Uh, so you know that D uh, is, is, is pronounced differently in different languages, uh, although it's D, but we say D, did you, or we say did you, D, like in, in Persian it's pronounced slightly, so the possession of the mouth is slightly different um, in English and French or other languages, although it's the same phoneme that we hear or the same consonant sound that we hear. So you need to be able to um, sharpen your listening and you need to be able to learn how to um, uh, connect the phonemes, not only words. Now let's let's see for the accuracy, you also need to be able to develop your phrasing skills. So you need to listen to it, not just word by word in a chunky way, which is not very good, because you need to find how these words are interconnected and what's going on there. So how is it a, is it a rising sound? Is, I mean, and then after being able to distinguish the words, you need to be able to distinguish the um, the, the way those words are combined together and they are expressed, um, so so that you can you know decode the meaning of that. So would you be able to do so if you are not able to understand what those people are saying? The answer is obviously not, because if I cannot distinguish sounds, phonemes, connected words, and then I would not be able to, I mean, distinguish phrases, so obviously I would end up doing the wrong way, and I would not be able to understand what those people are saying. Is it important if you don't know a word, or if you are not uncertain about a particular word, no, if you are looking through the context, you can, if you're not a chunky type, you will not be trapped. But if you do it like, what? I got this word, I got this word. Okay, so finally, you won't be able to remember the, how those words are connected. So, how can we enhance, how can we sharpen our ears by pencil sharpener? Um, no, not by a pencil sharpener, but you can do it by transcriptions. So, transcription is a very good good practice. You can do multiple tasks. So these days we have on YouTube you can have um, easily you can see the subtitles so you can get exposed yourself. I want you to be exposed to different uh, areas, um, different types of so you can listen to um, something, docu I mean documentaries, you can listen to different areas about space, about Earth, or you can listen to various topics. You can listen to multiple sources. I mean, it would be preferably for upper, intermediate, or advanced, so that you can put yourself into difficulties, and that way you can, your ears, and this should be continuous. You shouldn't do it just today, I'll do it tomorrow, I don't know. No, because this is a skill, and it's not running. Just say, even if you are a professional, you know, athlete, you need to do 
some running every day. You need to warm up your body. You need to do cardiovascular sports. So these are the everyday thing. You can't say now, hey, I'm a professional football player. I'm not going to run. No, you, you need to do it. And this is it. So if you want to be successful um, in IELTS, you need to um, listen to those um, different materials and try to transcribe them. Is it enough? Obviously not. I said this is one of the exercises which could enhance some particular skills and for this purpose. So why should your listening be very sharp and be able to distinguish phonemes, sounds, alphabets, letters and words and chunks and phrases and everything? Is that because sometimes we have questions in which you are required to just exactly say right what that speaker say uh, what that speaker said or what we need to put in that blank space to complete a gap fill for instance or you, you the, the person is uh, spelling his name and you need to be able to jot down the the alphabets word by I mean letter by letter and if you can't distinguish um, one of those letters unfortunately you're not going to be successful for gaining the score of that um, particular question so you need to be your ears should need to be really sharp in order to distinguish all of those things that I mentioned so uh, transcription is really good you can do documentaries you can listen to different sources I recommend academic sources so that you can also learn some vocabularies which might be useful for your reading as well because these are different domains so you need to know uh, you need to have a certain a uh, number of particular important vocabularies for different fields and you need to know some words about environment, like global warming, like different, different areas which are uh, every day, you know, in academic context you're exposed to, you see them through the news and this and that. So listening to different documentaries not only could sharpen your ears, but also could be helpful for gaining and for acquiring good vocabularies as well because those are being used um, in those contexts in those academic contexts that you're watching or you're listening to um so um the second thing uh is going to be developing your general understanding so um your general understanding obviously um, um means that you you are going to uh, listen to being able to holistically understand what that part is saying. So, is it always a good idea to just do transcriptions, transcriptions, transcriptions? No. And what's the purpose? What's, what, why is it not? There is, a, that, there is a big disadvantage to this type of exercising and if you overdo it and do not make, the, you know, you not maintain the balance with other exercises, again, you will have problems because some of the questions of IELTS need that sort of skill more than the others. But if you do it that way, you're always like this. Hey, pause it, pause it. So there would be no pauses in your IELTS exam. And so the people that say, hey, I pause it for you. Now, what do you think? There would be now, I mean, the pause recording for 30 seconds. Those are the general things, but not between those. So there would be certain times that the, the, the uh, track between those 10 questions would be paused. We'll do examples at home and you will see how those pauses are um, implemented in the IELTS listening skill. But the point is you need, you should not be dependent on pauses. That's what I'm saying. You need to be able to distinguish simultaneously, listen to the whole thing and being able to distinguish. So for this purpose, if you do transcriptions at home, I recommend that you do not do it word by word, but listen to chunks and phrases. And then after two, three seconds, pause it, write it. And then while you're doing so, are you using your grammar? Are you using your, I mean, is it, does it make sense what you're saying? Because sometimes you might hear some sounds and letters, but it wouldn't make sense, would it? So while you're writing, I want you to do one thing. And the thing is, while you're writing, I want you to use your grammar. So when I say, um, for instance, if I say, not going there tomorrow, I, it would not be I not going there tomorrow. You will not hear, you will hardly hear the word am not going there because it would, it would be finalized with m, but your grammar says, hey, 
You cannot say, I go in there tomorrow, can you? So, you need to put an am there. That's it. So, you, you, these are like supervisors. Your grammar knowledge comes at, as a supervisor in telling, hey, does it make sense? Is it grammatically correct? And then it will help you guess the better, better words. Because you, you do not hear, even in your own language, even in your own first language, you, are, you do not hear all the words. You slur the words or you, you, know, you, you say them fast and people just guess what you're saying. You, you can think of so many examples in your own, in your own language. So, uh, if, if your first language is not English, so what I'm saying is, obviously, there are many uh, types that you would need to be able to guess it with the help of your grammar. And not only your grammar, but also your lexical knowledge can help you. So by lexical, I mean the vocabularies that you know could also help you. Or how these words... So I want you to do one thing. Your ears should be sharp, but at the same time, they need to also be able to connect those and be able to distinguish different accents. Uh, you know, uh, language... I mean, eh, they are not the same. So Australia, there are, there are similarities... But there are different variations. So I also recommend that you listen to different, different multiple resources and sources in different six-minute English. I, I don't know. You can listen to different, you know, you've got lots of things these days. You can go through YouTube and listen to audio story books even, which is for enhancing your skills. That, that would be good. Um, yeah, you can listen to inter upper, intermediate, or advanced audio story books. These are helpful because while you're doing the transcriptions, you're also thinking of or getting the picture, which is our second skill. So what I said about getting the picture is more of cognitive sort of approach to listening. And by cognitive, I mean that you need to understand what's going on there. If you can listen to an audio story, which is not, you know, very helpful for IELTS techniques, no, but it's just good for your practicing your listening skill because your listening after being sharpened needs to be very flexible why because say it's it's better american accent it's better british accent there are two different ways i mean you might be obviously you know as an intermediate i've had experiences about students that they know the word but when you say all oh, they don't distinguish they can't distinguish all oh, with all oh which are different, so we say, oh, what do you mean? Is that this? Or the, the other way, if you're, if you're ex I mean, used to saying better, and somebody else comes and says it better, oh, so that person would not also be able to understand what that speaker says. So in terms of IELTS, 70, 80% is going to be British-based, but yeah, there are other, you know, international. So I always recommend that you listen to all different skills so that your listening is flexible enough to understand and distinguish all of these things. But in terms of cognition that we discussed for the second part, in understanding or cognitive listening, being able to know what's going on there, what, what, what's the topic, being able to spot some information. So this is where, if you see some journalists, they go for a com press conference, do they write whatever they say? No. What they do is they listen, they record it, and they take notes. So while they're taking notes, they do not write unimportant words and matter. I mean things like and, but, whatever. They try to use some symbolic language with themselves. They try to use some graphic organizers probably in their mind, like using charts, using question marks, and so that they can summarize or outline what's going on there and write just down the important words. You can practice the same thing with the audio story that I made the example of. You can listen to and being able to pictureize what's going on is very important. Even if you miss some words, which, all right, so when you read novels, there are lots of sensory words. Or if you listen to an audio story book in upper, intermediate, and advanced, you might hear, because authors use sensory details, and then you might not be necessarily familiar with all of those words which are being used in that context, but you might be able to guess them. So when the person is trying to describe, are they very useful for IELTS? No, I can't say they're very useful. But if you are able to listen to an audio story advanced or even the real ones, I mean, the, um, it would be difficult and challenging, but if you can listen to the original ones, if available, like podcast, it would be difficult, wouldn't it? 
So uh, you need to be able to listen, being able to familiarize, I mean, uh, pictureize what you're listening to, getting a picture, what that speaker says, how, I mean, understanding the feelings, paying attention to transition words. So if, if you listen to a lecture, which normally appear in task four, in academic context, a person is going to talk about a literary topic. So being able to distinguish those transition words could also be very useful. And you basically need to get the gist. What's going on there? What's the general idea? You need to be able to take notes while listening. So this is multitasking. You listen, you take notes, you picture, take to picturize what that was, what those speakers are saying. So and this, this you can get exposed to different sources of, I mean, listening sources. You can listen to audio story. You can listen to podcast. You can listen to like BBC Six Minute English. You can listen to Task Four. You can listen to or watch. I, I, I would say. Yeah, you can also watch, but listening is better because when you watch, your eyes, your your um, visuals also are helping you. But it's not. It's okay if you do it in your free time, but if you do it as an exercise, no, I would say you'd better listen to podcasts where you just your listening is the only gate which is analyzing that sort of information, whatever the accent is. Listening to radio can also help. So what, what I'm saying is you are trying to basically get the gist of that, you get, you get, you're you trying to get the general idea of that, so picturizing would be definitely important in whatever the context is. And you need to keep up with the flow. So how it goes up, how it goes down. So for instance, in task four that we, we will discuss later, the person says blah blah blah, and other things like that. So this tone means that part of the story is over and the speaker is going to move on to the next step, either another example, and the other side, and so you need to be mindful. So what we, what we see here, you need to all be not only the transition words, but also how the voice goes up and down. So, and this means, and what happens if you miss a word? Don't worry. So we are doing the transcriptions for practicing those things and we are listening to these in order to balance. If you are too uh, practicing transcription, transcription only, you will have problems because you are making yourself dependent on chunky skills. We say chunk, 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 pause, pause, but hey, what did you say here? What's like, uh, you don't need to do it and the other way around. Um, so this is going to balance. Going to get the gist and the general idea and what's being able to pictureize, being able to get the picture, what's going on there, what did the person say. Shall I also use my previous knowledge? Yes. So that's why I say, if you know, so listen, in your own uh, field, that you might be an expert in any field. When people say something around it, even if, I've, I've seen some people say, oh, I might not, my English and technical language is really good. Your English is not good. You're knowledgeable and you know some words. So what happens is you develop that in your mind because you know the context. So that's why I'm saying if you familiarize yourself with the different contexts and listening, you will be able to gain some words, some mentality. So if I say Diana, I saw Diana say yesterday, you know that it's would be either in a jungle, I mean in a zoo, not a jungle, it would be in a zoo or it would be a, a mod, I mean something like a robot or anything because you have you are using your previous knowledge which is we know that the uh, dinosaurs um, have become extinct and they, they they don't exist anymore so you're using your information so the more you listen to the more you get exposed to the better obviously because you you know the words that you're going to use or say your previous knowledge your background information by the context would be all useful and helpful in understanding the listening being and being able to maneuver through the context and if you were asked for particular things either a cognitive one a comprehension one or a um, specific accuracy why i mean wise questions which might be asked in and and we, it needs your accuracy skills so um, we need to use our knowledge we need to use our background knowledge your own logic not only your knowledge but also your logic so you said you can even guess many words in that way. See, uh, these days many people prefer uh, to be slim and slender, but he's really um, corpulent, let's say, or he's really obese. So corpulent is, would, be a, would be a literary word, and some of you might not necessarily know, and wouldn't be very useful for IELTS, 
But obese is a technical word which means being heavy or being too fat. Oh, these are formal words for which are being used for overweight. And obesity is, a, is an academic word, but corpulent, no. However, those words, even if you didn't know, would be um, probably, if you use your logic, you would be able to guess it. Because in the first sentence, I said, most people prefer to be slim and slender. So if you know even one of them, you'd be able to slim and slender are two words, I mean, which mean act attractively thin. Not bony. Bony is negative, or skinny is negative because they carry negative connotations. But those words, everyone wants to be slim and slender. And if you know those, but we say everyone wants to be them, but he is. So obviously, this word is something opposite. Most people would like to be thin, but he is fat. He prefers to be fat, or overweight, or whatever. You can guess it. That's what I'm saying, even if you don't know the word. So. Uh, being able to analyze the context through your own logic, paying attention to transition words, those are very, what is transition words? And, but, so, therefore, nevertheless, however, on the other hand, many, many, many big lists that we're going to discuss later. And that's it. So what else you know? Yeah, transition words. Uh, they show how different parts are logically connected. When I say, well, in view of the strategies that we'd like to in view of, what does that mean, means because of. So if you know it, oh, oh, so this is a subordinate class, and you're going to use these sentences in your writing, you're going to use this skill for decoding the readings. So if you know the grammar, if you know the language, try to use these, com I mean, complex structures, compound structures that way, so, yeah, how those are, because that's how we, so we talked about first chunk, I mean, phonemes, words, intonation, logic, previous information, vocabulary knowledge, now in a bigger context, analyzing the syntax. So when I say since, well, since most of the factors these days are consuming blah, 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 I know that this sentence, there's going to be a pause and it's going down with a falling intonation because there's going to be a, a comma at the end of this first clause. How do I know it? Because I started with the transition word since, which means because. So because blah, 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 what? Comma, the rest of the sentence. Yeah, since blah, blah, blah. OK, since it's um, too expensive, I'm not going to buy it. So since blah, 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 comma, the rest of the sentence. So being able to um, distinguish those, those transition words is really important. If you would like to analyze the, the syntax, which is the bigger picture, um, very much. So we... Both of the exercises we talked about today are going to be, um, you know, for both things, being able to spot and locate accurate, very sounds, letters, words, phonemes, phrases, whatever, or being able to understand bigger context, being able to decode the syntax, uh, what way the syntax means, the whole structures, which are also needed for other skills and IELTS. And um, you also pay attention to how different speakers... Oh, that's another thing. The last skill is being able... So in terms of logic, for instance, and in terms of picturizing, I'm going to say another thing. So you listen to audio stories, and people in that, in that room, there are three or four people talking together. So your listening task three is going to be about this. As, as we talked in the previous session, I said in task three, you're going to decode what these three or four, maximum four, three or four speakers are saying. And you need to be able to distinguish, okay, what did the girl say, what did the first boy say, and how did he reply, and how did he answer? You, you, so you need to be able to also picturize and being able to distinguish how different speakers are, get, are getting connected, developing cognitive skills, you're using your longer knowledge, and the tone of the speakers, where are they, what's going on there. You, and guessing, you, you, must, you might have been in such context before. You, there, there's a conversation, somebody um, is talking to another person for being a hotel. You must have done it so far. So being able to know how those speakers are, are communicating and what the person asks, how the person answers, these are all important. So how they react, do they agree or disagree? Yes, if, if, if in, in terms of that one that I told you for task three, for instance, I, yeah, the, the professor says, 
uh, yeah, there's a professor and two students. One of them says, I, do, but I, I think it's a good idea. And the other says, yeah, so do I. I you might have a point here, but I think, well, oh. So, and then the, the, the question would be like, both of them prefer to do this? The answer is no, because one of them says, would be, might be a good idea, but paying attention to transitions, that's really important. How the questions are posed, those transition words are important. Otherwise, you would do, the, do it wrongly. And what's the topic? What's going on there? So using your own knowledge, using the previous information, using the transition words, um, being able to pictureize, being able to get the whole con concept by developing your um, cognitive skills and understanding skills. And yes, we talked about how to strengthen your listening skill. These two exercises. And what about the exercise for task two? How can we, I mean, so for the first one we said, I, I said that it's, a, it's important to do transcriptions, which has a side effect, and the side effect if you do too much transcription, you will be chunky time. But the second is like, now, how can we balance this? Listen, take notes, and reproduce it if you would like to also practice speaking. How does it work? You listen to six minute English, you listen to a piece of news, you listen to an audio story, you listen to any content that you like, doesn't matter. But while you're listening, remember, you've got a pen and piece of paper. And you, you're going to listen, pictureize, take notes. Listen, pictureize, take notes. Do this for one, two, or three minutes, and then pause the recording. And, okay, and then look at your notes and start reproducing. Do you remember? Do you have the picture of that, what those people say? Can you reproduce them through your own way, through your own words? That would be oral reproduction. That's a very good skill for listening. For listening, and so you are connecting your listening and speaking skills together. That would be really recommended. You look at your own notes, and then you start reproducing the content for yourself. Oh yes, oh uh, well, this this uh, and that's how it works. And while you're doing so. If you would like to make it really a good practice, imagine that there are speakers around you and there are all English people, I mean English teachers sitting around looking at you and then you're, you're talking to them and you're telling them what's going on here. Yeah, if you think, then, then now, how, how well can you do so? If you can't do it well the first time, if you've got lots of pauses, don't, no problem, do it second time, third time, fourth time, unless you can do it. This is also be a good practice for your, for your speaking as well. Okay, so we talked about different things today. Uh, to wrap up, we just say that we talked about how to sharpen your ears through accuracy, how to um, enhance your, the accuracy and the sharpness of your listening skill by being able to understand those. We talked about how to develop cognitive skills and how to um, be uh, able to um, develop logic and, and using your own previous and background information about a context and also using transition words to be able to decode those complex classes or uh, compound structures and yes so these two is I mean skills that the, or these series of exercises that I told you for the first one transcription for the second one take notes listen and then reproduce it orally which would be very helpful and then uh, the, la the, the next thing, so it's a triangle, and the next angle would be about strategies. Now, what's your strategic approach to, through IELTS? How many different types of questions do we have? How should I approach one? How should I behave? And, and how can I s standardize my, um, my behavior while I'm, doing, uh, I'm taking the test? And, Oh, those would be uh, very, very um, subject specific, in particular about the IELTS itself. And we're going to start uh, working on those strategies in a series of sessions because we will not be able to do, do them through one or two mini lessons. So coming up next, we're going to start IELTS listening strategies, probably the first portion. Um, let's see how many sessions going to take us um, to, to finish the whole part. And then nothing else. So what I want you to do is just, is just um, remember to please 
share it with your friends if the content was useful. Um, other people can also use it. And then um, I'll be happy if you please subscribe to the channel and follow me both on Instagram, which is IELTS.Booster, or my YouTube channel. Um, that would be very um, kind of you. And then in the end, I'll put just the slides, I'll put the video to wrap up so you can slowly read or pause or anything you wanted. If you haven't taken notes about it, you will have the notes, the gist of them in the end. I hope the session was useful. We're going to continue next session with the IELTS listening strategies, which would be the third angle of this cycle. But you should do these exercises from today. If you would like to be successful, allocate a proportion of time for your transcriptions and for your note taking. If you can do it at least one hour and a half and two hours continuously every day you're listening, you will make a big difference in two weeks and you will see how your listening has been enhanced in just two weeks by doing both of these um, exercises simultaneously, note taking and also transcriptions. Thank you very much. Don't forget, stay with me. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It was really lovely to see you again. And now uh, you will see the, um, the, I mean, a short clip in the end about it. Thank you for watching. See you next time with the strategies for IELTS listening. Have a good day. Bye bye.